I am Kevin La from the Institute of Future Cities, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. So the research initiative is that we noticed that there are a lot, a lot, a lot of outdoor thermal cover studies conducted in the last two decades. We found that like over 150 articles were published in the last 20 years. But at, at, at the same time, we do not have an official uh, guidance for conducting outdoor thermal cover surveys. So this is unlike the indoors because like we have the X-ray handbook, which provide guidelines and details for, um, for the thermal assessment of the indoor environment. And at the same time, the method methodology for outdoor thermal cover surveys is quite different. It can be very uh, widely across uh, studies from different parts of the world. And it makes it very difficult to evaluate the results or cross uh, validate studies between different countries. In 2014, there's an article from, by Johansson and his colleagues on reviewing the state of the art instrument and methods in outdoor thermal cover studies. But although there are some uh, guidelines such as suggested by the WMO, X-ray, or even the ISO, but the instrumentation and methods cannot be readily applied to outdoor studies. At the same time, we found that there are large variation, as we mentioned um, just previously, uh, in methods and instrumentation, and the reliability of the instruments. Uh, was not standardized so that the results may not be guaranteed to be um, accurate enough. So the objectives of the study is to um, facilitate the standardization of the methodology for conducting surveys and um, meteorological measurements for outdoor thermal cover studies. And then through comparing and identifying the characteristics of uh, outdoor thermal comfort in different urban and climatic setting, we can uh, develop or to determine a appropriate analytical approach also uh, to define the uh, level of outdoor thermal comfort for climatic design of outdoor spaces. So the workflow is uh, basically we started to acquire data from uh, researchers and to identify the key parameters of thermal comfort uh, from different studies. And then we're going to uh, process the raw data to do the quality check on a uh, project basis, and then to compare with the published uh, outcomes of different studies. And then after the stage of quality check and gathering the data, then we're going to develop the trial version of the global outdoor thermal data database by um, visualizing the data, creating the data uh, repository, and then hopefully we can define, uh, develop a query system for extracting the data uh, more conveniently for the users. And the schedule, um, we started to gather the uh, metadata from the existing publications uh, earlier last year. And then we formed a pilot group of researchers to study, uh, to define the study scope. And then we sent out uh, a request for collaboration and started to uh, acquire data from researchers. And then we are now at the current stage to um, conduct a quality check of data to harmonize the data because of the different thermal assessment scales used. Uh, and hopefully we can finish or complete the, uh, complete the, the stage uh, by the end of this year. So these are the countries that we included in, the, in this study. And they're from different climate zones and with a total of over 20,000 uh, samples from these studies. And as you can see here, we have a wide range of uh, assessment scale for thermal sensation, especially for thermal comfort, because like the comfort uh, perception is quite different from thermal sensation and preference. So it's a, it's a holistic or uh, uh, the overall uh, comfort level of the, uh, of the respondents. And we found that there are quite a wide range of um, assessment scale used in the previous study. So in the current stage, we started to look at, look at the data, trying to uh, make them into one single uh, assessment scale by transforming the data. 
And then for, we used uh, three particular study here to uh, demonstrate the tr transformation uh, proposed by uh, Dawes in 2002. And then we found that the transformation did not affect uh, the variant explained by these uh, by the subjective objective relationship, but of course, like slopes will reduce because like the uh, overall assessment point will reduce. But at the same time, the overall relationship uh, remained unchanged after the transformation. And for the thermal sensation and thermal index, uh, the relationship between them, we found that there, uh, all of the study found a strong relationship between uh, the mean thermal sensation fold and PET, and then the slope, but the slopes are pretty different across different climatic regions. So uh, this is of course due to the uh, climatization, but at the same time, there may be some variations in the instrumentation and the methodology being used. So uh, at this stage, we found quite a lot of like, inconsistencies between studies, um, including the elements in the questionnaire surveys, for example, um, uh, thermal comfort folds that we, we showed before. And at the same time, the time of conducting the studies were quite uh, different because like only two studies were conducted in all seasons and five of them do not cover uh, the winter seasons. So the relationship may not be that complete. And personal factors also affect the uh, evaluation of calculation of thermal impacts. And then way forward uh, to, um, Ultimate goal is to provide an empirical basis for uh, establishing this uh, the outdoor thermal comfort model by understanding the different elements for uh, human thermal comfort. And hopefully in the long term, we are going to uh, develop, establish a standard methodology for conducting outdoor thermal comfort research. Okay, thank you very much. I think time is up here. Thank you.